So about, man, what, six years ago, I guess? Um, she was pregnant with Hensley. She was about to have to go back to work because she'd used all her time off. And then I said, you know what? I did the numbers. I said, if we sell our house and get a smaller house and have smaller payments, we could, you know, you could stay home and, and we could just live off my income, which she was excited about. And then I said, but also did you know there's people that have small houses on wheels? And at which point we're like, we thought that was something you only did when you retired or maybe out of necessity financially. Uh, we realized there were people middle-aged that did it. Um, and so that was kind of where that idea came from. We figured worst case, it doesn't work out we could come back and get another house again. I said, we had came across a video of somebody doing this lifestyle mm -hmm. and we were like, wow, I didn't even know that that existed. So that's kind of where we got the idea to start doing videos ourselves is because we thought, well, what if we were that video that someone saw and then it changed their life like it did our life. So that's kind of how the videography got started. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the plan initially to, hey, let's quit our jobs and be YouTubers. You know, <laughs> um, we planned on, we didn't plan on doing that, actually, we're introverts. We planned on continuing to, she continued to nurse. Um, every once in a while we come back and she just pile up hours here in Cookville and then I continued to do web design, SEO, and then it just, we started filming stuff and showing what it was like and people really were way more interested in us than we thought they would be. <laughs> but so it, uh, it worked out really well that we got to change lives through that. So it was about a one or two year transition, I guess, for the YouTube, it wasn't like we just, so, hey, let's be YouTubers and we quit our job and then a month later we were doing, you know, videos and, and vlogging and blogging full time. It was a transition. I never even camped ever. So it was crazy when he approached me and was like, hey, what if we live in a camper and travel? I'm like, what if we hate camping? <laughs> But Nathan had done some tent camping a yeah. little bit as a kid. But well, I forgot. We, we'd owned a pop-up camper for about a week. <laughs> and we were towing it up the hill next to my parents' house for the first time here in Cookville. And it came unhitched, rolled down the hill, went in the ditch, and like damaged it. And we never, I think we used it one time until that. <laughs> so, yeah, I had little to no camping experience either because a pop-up camper is way different uh -huh. than towing a trailer. But so. that's what made it kind of a fun adventure, mm -hmm. too, was it was just a learning experience on all ends. Mm -hmm. and. Not that we're experts, but we learn every day mm -hmm. with what we're doing, and I don't know, that just makes it fun, part of the journey. I never even knew this was a possibility or an option. I mean, I guess we thought you kind of did the nine to five, or as nursing, I was doing, you know, 12, 13 hour shifts, and um, I, I guess we just thought that that was, that was life, that's what you do, and then we realized that, um, you can take your education and you can build your own business and you can build whatever life it is that works for you and your family and that was something that I didn't even know existed or I would love so this is really cool that we're able to take what we've learned and and adapt and create our own business that allows us to travel full-time. I think it's important when you're when you're choosing a major, choosing a career, um, and, 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 and a lot of people, it's just, it's just changed in the last 10, 20 years, but just to know yourself and know what you're passionate about and what you love. Marissa loved helping people, serving people, and we still do that. We just do it in a different way. Um, and, and she trained herself through tech and through life to do that, so even though she's not necessarily a full-time nurse right now, she still gets to help people. Um, and I always had a passion for technology, and even though I'm not necessarily, <laughs> bless you buddy, even though I'm not necessarily working for a technology company or you know working behind the scenes at a large corporation with their computers and some of the stuff we train for with MIS, even though I'm not specific, good <laughs> grief. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> you okay? Um, maybe even though I'm not specifically doing the things we did at Tech, that passion and what I trained for, those things have morphed into camera gear and, and editing and a lot of the things camera gear and editing a lot of the things we do now so it's um, I think it's more about it's about knowing yourself and knowing what you're passionate about and I, I think we're still true to ourselves from what we were when we graduated you know high school and graduated from tech and it's been good I think anything out of the norm mm -hmm. you know living differently is is always a little scary in a sense you know I thought what are we doing sometimes when it's like let's let's sell our house and let's live small and um, how do you do that with kids and how, what, how do you travel with kids and what about our jobs and so there was a lot of a lot of fear but I'm we told ourselves we didn't want any regrets we didn't want to look back on life and think what if we would have you know been bold been fearless and 
and taken that leap, you know, we didn't want to live life out of fear and let fear hold us back. So we decided, you know what, we'll just go for it and then if we fall on our face, then we'll just go from there and we'll try something different. And I'm really glad that every time we've been confident enough to take those leaps, we've been rewarded because it's been, it's been more an adventure than we ever thought possible. Yeah, I think the more we, you know, as she mentioned that, but, but the more we do things out of the norm, the more confidence we gain over time. And it's really hard. That first leap's the hardest, <laughs> like just going out outside of the norm that first time. And then after that, um, it get, it, I'm not gonna say it becomes easy, but maybe it gets easier and easier. Uh, we also like to talk about like, um, like what's the worst case scenario? So if you ask yourself that, for us the worst case scenario was maybe it's a little embarrassing, maybe we lost a little bit of money, we tried the RV thing out, it didn't work out, we go back, we get a house, and that's part of, you know, you know, like with tech, we have the confidence that we could still go out and she could get a job nursing. I could pick back up some clients. Um, we have that, you know, that part of us that's built up over time and through that, that we could still make a difference doing different things. Um, it's really hard to do, but for us, I think it depends on your personality too, but for us, I mean, it was like a year process. So if nothing else, you can actually start practicing what it would be like to live in an RV. I'm not saying get an RV and go outside and sit in it, but so we had four bedrooms in our house. Uh, we slowly started basically taking those bedrooms away. So we, during that year, we took one bedroom and said, okay, we're not going to use that one anymore. And then like maybe three, six months later, we said, okay, we're not gonna use that one anymore. And then during that process, we were also taking our stuff and then making decisions on, well, are we really using this? Do we need this? Because obviously if you're in a four bedroom, two bath house, you can't just take all your stuff and throw it in 200 square feet and be good to go. So that it'll kinda, kinda close the walls in and practice a little bit and then start seeing if you can live with less and then maybe, you know, maybe downsizing a vehicle or something, practicing with that. There's things you can do without actually going out, quitting your jobs, buying an RV, and then maybe three months later realizing you hate it. <laughs> um, I think maybe some different steps, but at least they're, I don't know, is that, just looking at me. <laughs> I think what surprised me too was I thought it would be kind of like a one and done on downsizing. Mm -hmm. um, He's much better at it than I am, so don't think I could never do that because I thought that about myself too. I thought I could never do that. Like, how would I downsize my things? How would I, you know, live in such a small space? I think you're really, uh, it's really surprising what you, what you think you need versus how much you really do need to have joy and, and just be able to spend time with family was all we wanted. We're like, how, how could we spend more time with family, more time with our kids, live an adventure? Um, so I think you just have to have a motivation uh, would might be a good way to, to get started. And that was my motivation. So any, I mean, anytime I start questioning myself, I think, would I, would I give up what we're doing with our kids or you know, we get to parent as a, as a team. It's just, we're a team family. And so would I give that up for, for more things? And that's my motivation. So maybe find what your motivation is. And it doesn't even have to be RV living. No. Just living minimally has just freed our minds and, and gave us so much more flexibility. And it's been really good for, for our life. I mean, our channel's not sell everything you got and go live in an RV. It's called Less Junk More Journey because it's not. And may, maybe it just means like we were initially talking about. Maybe it just means going from a four bedroom, two bath down to a two bedroom, one bath or three bedroom, two bath or so that you maybe won't be gone on the business trips as much and you get to spend time with family. It's, it's really about figuring out what's most important in life and then removing the stuff that gets in the way of that. It's not about the RV. I mean, for us, that works. The uh, RV for the real the crazy vessel. people, it might be a boat or something, which yeah. is not for us. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's, it just happens to be an RV that works for us. Mm -hmm.